Hi, my name's Claire and I am sharing just some thoughts that have been cropping up for me to share during my cancer journey and, 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 and situations that have arisen for me. And um, one of the things that's come up for me is the, the realisation that none of us are immune. None of us are immune. And I think I probably thought, well, I did. I thought I'd never get cancer. And the reason I thought that naively is because I live, you know, a, a pretty good lifestyle, balanced, healthy lifestyle, uh, according to what we're fed. So when we've grown up, we believe we're, we're fed that if we exercise regularly, we eat a balanced diet, and a balanced diet, according to the to the to the t to what we're brought up with, is that you have five food and veg a day. <laughs> well, obviously now I realise that's not quite what we need if we're going to, you know have a really clean body but of course it's, it's better than nothing so you five fruit and vegetables but a balanced diet I mean my diet was, was pretty pretty good before my cancer diagnosis but it was it it wasn't a, a way as clean as it is now so there was much there was a lot of room for, for growth there um but but in terms of of the you know the the nutritional guide the government nutritional guidelines I had a very healthy diet um <clears throat> I exercise regularly. I have all my life. I've always loved exercise. I'm. I've been. I'm emotionally balanced. I slept. Slept. Sleep well. So all. I, I've. I was already meditating regularly. I was already having a regular yoga practice. You know, my adult life. You know, I've run half marathons, mini triathlons. So physically healthy. So then I guess I thought because I didn't have any um, critical illness cover. And I talked about it, and funnily enough, I was going to get it, because I did actually think something could come up for me to get it, interestingly, and I, and I got the diagnosis before I had. Um, but I had a conversation with a friend, and he said, but Claire, your health's your insurance policy. And I thought, yeah, my health, yeah, I'm really healthy. I, I never thought I would get cancer. So I didn't get the policy, and um, of course, now I've got the, the diagnosis. Not only can I see why I've got it, you know, I was emotionally unbalanced, for a long time I wasn't in my empower, my power for a long time and I I guess I thought I was because I am confident when I'm a confident person um you know and I'm happy I've always been happy I, that's my natural state is uh, you know obviously not always because but my natural state is one of you know getting up early feeling really good you know so mentally quite balanced very positive I've always been a very positive person and a very confident person you know I could easily stand up on, a, on the front and, and, and give a speech and I actually enjoy that so um so confident and um but now I can see when I look back that emotionally I've been out of my alignment for a long long time and how stress definitely I, I know the root cause of my cancer is stress and emotional trauma but um but also now I am in my personal power which has only come to me in the last pro pro properly now I'm in it I know that I was out of it and even though I've, I've been feeling empowered and that that I was feeling 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 a lot empowered since my divorce but then and then it's stepped up again another level during my cancer diagnosis it's only been since my spiritual awakening that I had about two weeks ago that I actually now can sense I am in my personal power and what it means to be in your personal power, which is in your sh part of your chakra system. And actually, I saw my chakras for the first time during a meditation recently. And again, now I can, it, it's just everything that's illuminated. Um, so now I'm in my personal power, I can really see that I wasn't and I haven't always been in my personal power. And actually I've been in it more for the last five years, four years probably. And then each year it's got, I've got more and more towards it. And now I really feel firmly that I'm in it. But I now can see how, I've, how far out of it I was, especially leading up to and around the time of my divorce. Um, so... So the concept. So, so I guess what I'm, what I guess what I'm sharing is that we can't rely on our physical um, understanding of health to, to to think that we might be immune. Um, we also can't rely on our, you know, if we're if we're living, a, if we're really happy, not stressed, because um, you know we can't rely on it, on it. But also, what, what we're given, what we need, and not what we want. 
So whatever we're sent to us is is for our spiritual involvement. And I've known that from the start. I, you know, I I knew right from the beginning whatever was to come was part of my spiritual journey. And that when you really know that, there can be no right, right or wrong way of dealing with anything because it, you're just it's just part of your growth and involvement as well. So then it, it, the decisions you do make become less relevant. When you're really in your power, you know that you have the power. So again, you know, the decisions become less significant. But of course, it's important to make those decisions according to your truth and your alignment. Um, <clears throat> So the idea, yeah. So 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 none of us are immune. You know that we know we hear stories about athletes getting cancer, and you know perhaps you know people that are seemingly well balanced getting cancer. So it's part of a spiritual journey, but there has has to have been an imbalance of some description to have got cancer diagnosis. So I think it's important to understand where your imbalance came from, and I'm 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 very with where mine has come from although I know that there's other factors at play too I think I know the, the catalyst um, but what is significant is that the more ha the healthier you are physically or emotionally or mentally the more it's going to help when the adversities do come so it doesn't make you immune but it massively impacts the way you navigate it the stories you tell yourself, the information you take in, what you do with it, how you live through it, you know, who you are, who you become, and where, you know, the way you live, and then what you lead on to do. That, that is where the power lies, not whether or not you get the diagnosis, you know, so, so yeah, so just a reminder that none of us are immune, and I think that's been a good wake-up call for me, um, and it's been, um, humbling and actually what it's really taught me I think when I first got my cancer diagnosis one of my earlier thoughts was um that people how people might judge me because I'm a you know I was a, I'm a yoga teacher trainer Pilates teacher trainer teach classes I'm basically teaching people about balance and and the health and well-being and emotional balance and physical balance and mental balance and how how we need to be in our alignment and obviously cancer diagnosis means you're not in your alignment and initially I was thinking oh what people that means I can't really do my job anymore or what are people going to think of me whereas now I feel well first of all now I can see that that was me judging myself so lack of self-love straight away there in that was me judging myself um because for me to think that people might judge me means I'm judging yeah because when you know when you don't have judgment you don't judge others so, and that includes yourself. So that was a, that was a real illuminating um, uh, observation for me. And I've done journey therapies that have really helped to, go to, to look at all my um, samskaras and, and patterns that have come from conditioning. Um, <clears throat> so, so, so there's this, I, so once you are, once you realise that yeah, none of us are immune and that we don't need to, when we drop the fear around the diagnosis and the judgment around the diagnosis, then you can look to see what this diagnosis is teaching you, what you can do to support yourself and then, and then how you might use it to inspire others. So I did a meditation the day after my diagnosis, after a yoga practice, I did my primary series and then offered it up at the end what do you want me to do with this I asked that the morning after my diagnosis and the response was inspire others so I knew there was a higher purpose to it so and so that could be the and that can be the case for anybody anybody we've all got a higher purpose we're all here we all have a dharma a life purpose so so that's another way of feeling empowered during uh, uh, navigating a diagnosis like this so, so even though we're not, so we might not be immune, but the way we live our lives can support us when the diagnosis does come. So it is really important to, to live a lifestyle that gives you as much immunity as you can, because prevention is better than cure, always. And if the diagnosis does come, in whatever form that is, then it's looking for those lessons. First of all, 
where's that imbalance come from? Because it's come from imbalance of some description. What's true for you? It might be more physical, it might be more mental, it might be more emotional. And I know for me it was more emotional. So then what do we need to do to restore that balance? And then, what do I learn from it? How have I evolved? How am I growing? Um, you know, what do I need to support myself during doing this? Um, so I'm not making the same mistakes. Because I hear people go, oh, but I've got to work because, because I need to. Because of the... But actually, your lesson might be to, to give yourself a bit of space and a bit of downtime and give yourself rest time to recuperate. So, and, and if that's what your body needs, then that needs to be put first when you're going through a healing crisis, which it can through the healing crisis. So, so really, and then that's where it comes back to empowerment, because then you're making the decisions based on what you need right now in this moment, and not worrying about what may or may happen in the future. Because all that matters really is what's happening in the moment. And health has to come first when you're dealing with a health crisis. And everything else will take care of itself if you're putting that need, your, your primary need, first. And, and, and that's another thing I've learned is around self-love. I think I'll save that for another video. Um, so finding your life purpose and your teachings, your teachings for yourself first. And then perhaps your dharma is to share those teachings with others. And maybe it isn't. Maybe that isn't your path. But it feels like mine. Um, but you have, to, you have to experience it first on the inside. So it's just come up for me now. I went into meditation during my second round of chemo. And I remember writing it in my journal. And I just went into um, to, to, and connected. And I heard from God. And the voice said, do not be afraid, I would not forsake you. You could only heal others when you yourself have truly healed. Um, and that was beautiful when that came through. And I journaled it, journaled it afterwards. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was it word for word, but it is written somewhere. Um, and, you know, again, it made sense of, of the journey I was going on, why I was going through it, um, you know, to, and to truly heal. I thought I'd already healed from my divorce, but the cancer, cancer showed me early on there was something I hadn't let go of still. And I let go of that quite early on and I've been more in balance ever since. So, you know, again, there can be, we can think we've done the work, but there's still stuff that we can subconsciously be holding on to and the cancers have enabled me to, to make that conscious and actually see patterns in my childhood that have led me through different life situations. So all very empowering, illuminating, interesting, unravelling. Um, but the journey therapy is something that's definitely helped me. And if you feel that your uh, diagnosis has been linked to any kind of um, emotional trauma, stress, which I'd say for most of us that's true in some capacity, whether it's a catalyst or not, um, then the journey therapy for me has been very powerful. Brandon Bays, she's got a book where I went to see a journey therapist. And I only had two sessions, but the first one for me was very, very powerful. Um, so that might be something you want to check out. Um, so yeah, so none of us are immune. None of us are immune, but we don't need to be afraid of that. Because whatever comes in our path is there for our own higher good. And I think that's... And so now... I don't, I think probably there was some shame around what other people might think of me at the very beginning. There was probably shame about what other people might think of me. Uh, even though I wasn't bothered about losing my hair, what did other people, what might other people think of me? Not so much with that. Um, but perhaps shame that I had cancer because I've always been fit and healthy and active. And now I can see how beautiful it is that, that, I've, that I've, I, I have normal it is. How I'm not different to any, you know, I'm not safeguarded, I'm not immune, I'm, I'm human. And so when I teach a yoga class now, you know, when I had to make my adaptations after my operation, I had to strip my practice right back. Um, and, and it just made me feel hu human. It made me feel, you know, um, that I, you know, we are all, we're all linked. We're all going through this path and this journey together. You know, I've got stuff going on in my body now that I'd rather wasn't. It is. That's my truth. That's my right reality. I can accept it fully now because I've finally connected to source 
And, and so there's no fear around judgment. There's no fear around um, my physicality. And if I'm who I am in the moment, that's all I can be. And so if my teaching reflects that, and if I'm my, per my practice isn't perfect when I'm teaching, then that's okay because none of us are perfect. And that's another realization that I've had. In fact, I'm gonna save that for another video. So I'm gonna share that in the next video. So I hope you do watch more and I hope I'm touching you in some way that helps, that informs, that empowers, that um, encourages. And thank you for listening and um, take care, sending lots of love.